Thanks for deciding to be a part of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, at our outstanding studios here at First Star Logistics. Defense. Hmm. Offense can win games. Defense will win you championships. And I think Lou Anarumo obviously believes that. 11 takeaways in the last five football games. Very opportunistic defensive football team. We're going to talk about what they did against the Ravens, the last regular season game. What might happen against the Ravens in this upcoming wild card playoff game? How he handled the tragedy, the trauma that took place on Monday Night Football. A lot of things. Lou Anarumo knows of what he speaks, particularly when we're talking defense. Nobody better to talk to. You're smart to be joining us. You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And joining us in the trenches today, this is our outstanding studios that I'm in and down at Paycor Stadium, putting together another defensive game plan that will be pure genius is the genius himself. Yeah. Lou Anarumo, defensive coordinator extraordinaire, Cincinnati Bengals. Coach, how you doing today, sir? I'm good, Lap. Great lead up. I love it. I'm gonna I told you I'm gonna have you just wherever I go, just bring you with me and just say nice things about me. There we go. It. It's a package. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I I like I said, coach, I'm gonna next time I see you in person, I've got my cell phone here and I got a <laughs> bunch of messages. People are calling me and leaving me messages, coach. They want you to they want us to call back. Maybe we can call back together. There we go. I, got, I got about uh, I'd say seven or eight NFL teams. <laughs> so how about your defense? Seven games this year, you've held an opponent to 18 points or less. That's pretty darn strong. Are you, uh, I guess you never, nobody's ever satisfied when you're in a competitive environment like this, but you have to feel pretty darn good about your the way your defense has responded and played for you. Oh, I mean, unbelievable. Um, you know, just the, the, among among all the other things, we, you know the, the great things you said, but our guys coming up with big plays at the at the right at the big moments in some of these games, and you know it's going to be even more at the top here of the list to do that uh, going forward. So we're really going to need to uh, you know limit scoring, obviously, and uh, and again when the plays are needed to be made at the biggest point in the games, we're going to and I have faith that our guys will step up and do it. You know, to me, I, I am, you call me old school, people do whatever, but I am a believer in offense wins games, defense wins championships. And and uh, I think your defense, just think back on some of the plays. Look, look, at, look at the play in this past football game against Baltimore. Catch a pass, longest play of the day, and nah, not going to quit on the play. Cam Taylor, Britt, Jesse Bates, they're in there. They're, Jesse rips it out of there. They're ripping at the football. That big play, instead of a celebratory time, it's a tragedy because they turned that thing over. I mean, that was one of the four takeaways, and, and there are so many examples of that. Uh, the New England game, in a, in a, in a must-have deal, if they, they're in the red zone, if they score, it's trouble. You guys, big, big takeaway, and slam the door on that football game. I mean, it's not just that you've taken the football away. It's where, when, and how you've taken it away. It's crazy. No doubt. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the timing in those things is, is critical and uh, have, has been great. Um, you know, I think we've got a uh, little momentum going there. I, I certainly hope so with the takeaways because that can only, you know, it only helps you, um, you know, with uh, taking possession possessions away from these great offenses. And that's what we're going to have to do. I think it's 11 takeaways in the last five football games. I think it is, Coach. I mean that's that dog will hunt. I mean that that that'll that'll get it done for you, and and like you said, Baltimore's whole thing is uh, run the football, stop the run, uh, play clock control, clock management. You know we're going to limit your possessions. We're going to play keep away. Turnovers are massive against a, a philosophy like that, aren't they? Oh, no doubt they're big, regardless. But when you when you're playing against a team that, like you said, will try to play keep away from our offense um you know it's it's important that we get it back to our guys and so they can put some points on the board and um it, it'll be uh, it'll be a big part of the you know the game on sunday looking at this football game 
Uh, the Baltimore Ravens are the only passing attack in the National Football League where their tight ends have more catches and yards than uh, receivers and running backs. I mean, it's a tight end driven offense. There's no question about it. Mark Andrews uh, is, is a Pro Bowl guy and deservedly so. He didn't play last week, uh, but likely had eight catches for 103 yards on 13 targets. Kohler had four for 49 yards on six targets. They still tried to run it, play action pass to the tight end. 19 targets, 12 catches, 152 yards. It's a tight end driven uh, passing attack, isn't it? Oh, 100%. And they've got some great ones and uh, led by Mark Andrews, as we all know. But uh, it's a great, it's a really good group uh, of guys and tight ends and uh, you know, might be the best combination of uh, tight ends in the league. And, and um, as I mentioned, led by Andrews and uh, they're terrific. They know how to design plays to get the ball to those guys. The quarterbacks trust them. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, it'll be a challenge for us on Sunday night. Coach, I, I know you can't, you, you are, you are unique. You are special. You are talented, but I know you can't, you know, that crystal ball you have can't really tell you if Lamar Jackson is going to play or not. Uh, they, they're not saying uh, they don't know. I mean, John Harbaugh really nobody knows at this stage because um, we're we're talking here early in the week. I mean, practices, you know, big practices haven't started yet. But how different is this offense when Lamar Jackson plays? I mean, was the scheme much different with the other guys in there? It's just that Lamar Jackson is so freakishly talented; it makes it that different. Well, yeah, I think Lamar would fit in in any system. He does. He's such a, uh, you know, again, a M- former MVP of our league. He's so t- he can run it. He can throw it. You know, he's he's one of the premier players in our league. Uh, so as soon as you put him out there, it changes the dynamic. Uh, but the scheme stuff is is very similar. So we're practicing against what we think we need to take care of, and then, uh, but we'll be we'll be ready uh, if he if he's able to go. As I think back, I remember Cam Taylor Britt. Was Lamar Jackson for you? Didn't he? Didn't he give you guys a look as Lamar Jackson being the athlete? You know the Cam Taylor Britt is. I remember, you know, he was just coming back from injury, and I want to do anything I can to help the football team get ready. And I thought, I think I remember that he was the he was the guy that uh, was Lamar. I mean, who, who's going to be your Lamar this year? That guy's playing a hell of a good corner for you. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, so it's funny you said that. You know, we were watching some tapes from from earlier practices in the seating uh, in the season this morning, and. You know, there's Cam, and um, you know now he's starting that corner for us. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll have a, another uh, athlete back there to try to <laughs> stimulate as best we can, uh, Lamar. But you never, you really never can, obviously. But uh, we'll try to do our best. Coach, you've done an unbelievable job uh, with Cam Taylor Britt. He's done a great job, uh, position coach, coordinator. Everybody's done a great job in the development of Cam Taylor Britt. What is the attribute? as a rookie that stands out to you the most that he has that has shown he can play snap after snap for you? Well, as you mentioned, you know, I think all our assistants do a great job. Uh, Chuck Burks with, with Cam in the corners and, you know, Rob with Livingston with the safeties and James Betcher with the linebackers and obviously Marion Hobby with the D-line guys. Uh, you know, we, we feel like top to bottom, we got the best staff and best assistants in the league and it shows up in how our guys play and, uh, you know, getting back to Cam, I think that, you know, he has no fear. Uh, you know, he just goes out there and he's a, he's a competitor. Uh, so at the end of the day, you're playing fearless. You're playing uh, nobody's going to beat me. And, you know, the position he plays, you do get beat every now and again. That's just life in the NFL. But he'll come back and compete the next play. And, um, you know, that's what's so important when you're playing uh, corner in the NFL. That uh, selective amnesia thing, you know, right? Yeah, you're going to move yeah. on. And he, he does it. He does do a great job of that. Um, so I'm just I'm just curious. I, I know you you went into this football game armed with all kinds of things like you always do. I mean, the the inventory of of, of options for defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo seemed to be endless. Mm-hmm. But in this in that in this past football game to end the season. Did you play it pretty close to the vest and not throw a whole lot of things out there because you knew you would probably be playing them the following week and you wanted to have some inventory to drop on? Well, we wanted to win the game first, so right. you know, we we did what we had to do to do to secure the win. And um, you know, there's a combination of some uh, things that we uh, may do more or less of. You know, uh, 
but we certainly didn't show everything that we we had prepared for the game. So Lamar Jackson, obviously, if, if he's playing in this football game, is that that's that's the first thing you have to worry about. Is Mark Andrews, would he be the next thing? Would it be their running game? I mean, uh is it is it uh you know two A and two B? Uh, how, how how does it how does it break down for you? Yeah, it's difficult. You got you, you know you can't you know you can't pay too you know you have to be careful. You know, you gotta stop the run first and foremost. Right. And right. If they can get that going and they're getting five, six, seven yards at a clip, then you know, it's going to be a long day. Uh, you know, we got to get stops and get off the field. But, uh, you know, and then when they do decide to throw it, you know, you, you know, you got to look to where he is uh, and being on point uh, because he's such a good, good player. He's a hard guy to tackle and uh, he, he runs routes like a wideout for as big as he is. He's there's a reason why he's one of the top tight ends in our league. You know, looking uh, looking at the at this football team, you have such a great you uh, mix on on defensively of of youth and veteran players uh, that that just seem to feed off each other. Is, is that pretty much the case? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we love how uh, love how our veteran guys have been. You know, been around our younger guys and vice versa. You know, I think at this point in the season, everybody's. There's no more rookies. These guys have been playing with us uh, since back uh, back in May when we first got back with everybody and, uh, you know, drafting the guys in April. So, um, you know, it's already the second week in January, which is crazy. But, uh, you know, they, they, they've been working well together, and, and I, don't, I don't see any reason it would stop here uh, going the next, uh, next few weeks. Coach, I'm I'm thinking back in the game, and uh, the, the you got your first defensive touchdown of the season, and it came off of a three man rush. I mean, Trey Hendrickson gave you 18 snaps, but man, he was a stat sheet stuffer in those 18 snaps. Unbelievable production. I mean, two sacks, four spum. I mean, just un, unreal. So he yeah. gets the strip sack, and Joseph Asai, football awareness, he's got a hell of a rush on the other side. He falls in that bad boy for a touchdown. And then on one of the fourth and ones, Osai goes in there and they're trying to run a power. He smacks a 305 pound fullback, the pulling guard. I mean, he kind of he consumes everything. Everybody else gets penetration, and uh, you know, uh, there here comes Cam Taylor Britt from the backside making a tackle for loss. Unbelievable, jo Joseph Osai is making some plays for you, isn't he? Yeah, he's been around the ball and he's you know playing with some confidence. I think that's always a big part of it for the younger players, is that realizing that hey, I can you know, I can go out there and, and perform at a high level. And, um, you know, Joe's been around the ball a bunch, as I mentioned. And, you know, you go back to the Kansas City game, you know, huge sack in that game, forcing uh, the field yep. goal there. And yep. so we're going to we're gonna need him, uh, you know, down the stretch and certainly going to need him Sunday night. Coach, let me get you out of here on this because I, I do not want to be responsible <laughs> for minimizing the effectiveness of the game plan by – taking too much of Lou Anarumo's time no because problem. it is a big game plan day. Uh, just talk a little bit about what it was like uh, being part of what took place, the trauma on Monday night and, and how you handled the week following and how, how tough was it to get the guys back on track and get back to football and, and handling it as, as well as everybody did. Talk about that a little bit, coach. Yeah, I think both. Uh, first and foremost, it starts with both organizations, the Bills and the and our and ourselves, the Bengals, and how both uh, you know uh, training staffs, doctors, uh, you know, they, they, Demar couldn't have been in any better hands than he was at that particular moment because he had all all eyes and all attention on him, and that was the most important thing. And um, the way both teams uh, communicated with each other, Zach to Sean and Sean to Zach, and then the players getting together. I thought was really unprecedented. And I said it before, I think it'll be a case study of what to do in a situation. And hopefully we never see anything like that again. Um, but when there is an, a, a medical emergency, I think everybody handled it uh, flawlessly, to be honest. And uh, and thank God that uh, DeMar is now able to, he just left Cincinnati yesterday and is able to travel. And that tells you that uh, you know, he's making strides to hopefully getting back to where he was. Coach, can't thank you enough for your time. And, uh, boy, if if you're a fan of defensive football, put on tape of Lou Anarumo's Cincinnati Bengals defense because they play fast, they play hard, and they play smart. That's three good things right there, Coach. 100%. We appreciate it, Lap, and uh, 
We're looking forward to uh, the place being nuts on uh, Sunday night. That's for sure. Yes, sir. Let's go. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.